I do want to get into a little bit of the beginnings of of some of the things that you and me, what inspired some things that, that kind of kicked us off into the paranormal world. I think that'd be pretty fun. And tonight, one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up. This book right here, this is called Into the Unknown, and it's even from Reader's Digest. Man, this thing's like an encyclopedia. This thing is so badass. Like, this is a must read, and I'm gonna tell you why. Now, this thing, all right, we're talking. <laughs> I gotta have it. I gotta. I had it upside down. But this thing is so badass. I mean, it, it's like, it, it's just, it's illustrated. It's got words. If you for those that like words, but it's got pictures. So if you like pictures, it's just, it's a phenomenal book. And I'm gonna tell you why. But you got. Let me just tell you some of the the contents. We're talking ancient unknowns, earth shrines, Atlantis, art of magic, witchcraft, monsters, divination, astrology, uh, reincarnation, ghosts and spirits, spiritualism, PSI and science, power of dreams, animal PSI, mind over matter, leaving the body, astral projection, right? Yeah. Uh, healing, enigma of UFOs, uh, mm -hmm. PSI in the brain. I mean, guys, this book, and, and let me tell you why the, these books matter. This book came out in 82, I want to say. Let me look at the fucking uh, thing here. Anyways, I want to say it came out in like 82. Anyways, let's just let's just say early 80s. Guys, there's not been a lot of really good studies since the 80s. So Stacy's kind of agreeing with me. Yeah. It's just... Like there was a lot of hardcore studies back in the day. We could get away with some studies uh, and they funded some studies, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. But then like uh, we're talking like scientific shit as much as they could. Right. Right. Now, in these last like 30 years, I've asked a ton of paranormal investigators. I'm like, have we progressed at all? Have we done anything? And then most everybody's like, no, if anything, we've re regressed <laughs> on, on paranormal. So when you can get your hands on literature like this, read it because this is like right off the tip this. And this is also before, like nobody edited this book. Nobody can go back. None of these modern scientists that want to go back and try to change history and try to reword shit and be like, no, blah, blah, blah. No, this is going to tell you how it was. Uh -huh. It's going to tell you right after a lot of these uh, experiments and all that stuff. So yeah, you want to talk about some good read folks, get you into that book. I don't care if you got to try to find an old copy somewhere. I'm lucky to still have this, but this was one of the books when I was a kid all right, I grew up in the 70s and in the 80s. And mm -hmm. so when I was younger and this book came out and somehow I had it, I think because my grandma had a bunch of Reader's Digest stuff and my grandparents raised me. So this was one of the books that probably came with her stuff. And I ended up with it because as soon as I opened it up as a kid and I was like into the unknown. And look, when you open it up in this first like beginning, look at these cool, it's like a crystal skull some kind of monster looking thing, like a dude with, with dowsing or, Oh, that's a chick. Sorry. A girl <laughs> with dowsing rods. Like, I mean, they're stick dowsing rods, but still like that's old school. Right. I mean, there was just like cool images and I'm like flipping through here. And there was just like cool stuff, man. Tarot. Look at this. They're talking about the art of tarot and stuff. Like you just don't, you didn't see that kind of stuff. It, 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 you don't really see that stuff now much. You know, nobody yeah. wants it. And this is such a good collection. And it inspired me to where I am today with paranormal. Yeah, so, Nicole, I, I still remember a lot of the fate magazines back in the 80s. That was uh, your, your go to when you wanted to be as up to date on whatever was coming down the pike. Uh, books take years to get to print. Fate magazine was pumping them out, you know every month and then they like went quarterly and then they just kind of like disappeared. Yeah. And cause Nicole was talking about that. Um, and you also, I also wrote a book about my mini UFO sightings and encounters. Nice. Can you get this book on Amazon? Where can you get it? 
I mean, definitely let us know where you can get your book, Nicole. Uh, that's so cool. I have a book. I normally have it on me, but I don't have it near me. Sorry, guys. I don't have my book, but you can get it on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I think you can share the link. Try it. I don't care. I'm good. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't have my book on me because I, I did it for I I went and moved it somewhere and anyways, but yeah, uh that's awesome. And UFOs are a great subject as well. Um, but but anyways, this was one of the books, and then of course, when I wrote my book, since you brought up that you wrote a book. When I wrote my book, I also talk about other things that kind of some ghost stories from my childhood and stuff that inspired me. Um, but I, I just thought when when I was talking to Stacy on the phone before we did the show, I was talking about this book. And I plan on, on reading it nose to tail um, because there's so much information in there. And I used to just glean through it a lot. Now I really want to go back and actually read it nose to tail and just really get in there. I, I can't wait. Um, yeah, she's on Amazon. Nicole's on Amazon. Nice. Nice. Number 19 is coming out pretty. Is it going straight to ebook or are you getting it published? Nicole. Yeah. Um, and also you need to do audio versions. I, I can't tell you how many people are lazy and don't want to read today and they just <laughs> want audio versions. Like I can't tell yeah. you how many people ask me about my book. They're like, do you have the audio version? I'm like, no. They're like, uh, that's like shit. I mean, so I'm going to have to break down one time and start narrating my own book and do an audio version. Well, what's cool is you can clone your voice. In right? AI. If I don't sound like an idiot. Yeah. You can clone your voice <laughs> in AI. And then I'm just going to do Morgan oh, Freeman. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to do fucking Morgan <laughs> Freeman. I'd rather just do Morgan Freeman. Well, you can get Morgan Freeman if you want. Just record the whole thing in AI. Dude, he's um, the best. He's got the best voice, I think. I mean, there's good voices yeah. out there, but for me, I think my favorite's got to be if Morgan Freeman's talking, I'm listening. I'm yeah. listening. But yeah. Uh, Him and Darth Vader. Oh, yeah, yeah. James Earl Jones, man. He's the man. He's the man. Like a Mufasa. Any Mufasa lines, man. <laughs> um, right? You'd love to hire more. I know, but see, now we just do AI. We don't have to hire Morgan Freeman. We just do. <laughs> Although, I tried a test run of, of I, I actually did this because when Stacy was getting me into AI, I did a test run of me just sounding like Morgan Freeman, and it sounded weird. So I don't know if it would translate. It, but but that was, you know, they probably do better now. It's probably been a year. So I see you. How's Terry Lynn doing? She's doing okay. Um, we're not together anymore, um, but we're still good friends. So, but she's, she's, um, you know, living, living in the neighboring city and she's doing all right. She's hanging in there. I'm surprised she hasn't popped in today, to be honest with you into the chat. Um, Nicole, I tried to share the link. Oh, it won't share. Okay. Well type in the name of the book, type the name of the book in. So people know to at least where they can, um, go to Amazon and, and type that name of the book. Um, oh, it's okay. I see you. Like I said, it's, it's one of those things. So I, um, but okay. So we talked about me, Stacy, what about you? What was some of the first things that really inspired you to get involved into the other side of, of, of life slash death? <laughs> uh, well, initially in that, you know, I'm grew up in the eighties too. Uh, the bookstore, that lived in was in town uh didn't have a whole lot as far as the paranormal was concerned it uh was really limited to like one shelf and the only books that they had on there were uh books on witchcraft or satanism or whatever and one the first books that i picked up were of course dealing with that as uh Buckland's Book of Witchcraft, the Satanic Bible, and then there was also a book called the Necronomicon, which, <laughs> you know, if you know anything about that book, it is, it's really intriguing. They make it look like it's this 
hidden book that you know, they discovered and they just got it interpreted. And anybody who's been around that book, interpreting it or publishing it, they all die in mysterious ways. And it was all very, you know, like a cursed kind of information, which I thought was really cool. So, of course, I got really into that book and uh, it led me to uh, find some things that, you know, were talked about in the book that I didn't understand. So I went and sought counsel from people in Chicago about that information. And it actually uh, led me to my first teacher into Santeria. And I studied under him for years and years. But I mean, uh, your first book was like the Necronomicon. <laughs> yeah, that was the one that really got me. And the first thing that we discussed was the Necronomicon was full of shit. It was garbage as far as like real occult was concerned uh, because he knew the people who wrote it personally. Was it this one? I don't yes. Know. Yeah. He he said the only thing in this book that has, is, has any truth to it whatsoever is the mythology, the story around Marduk and Tiamat. Everything else is bullshit. <laughs> he was there in New York when this book was being written, and he knew the, these guys that were creating it. Basically, they, they saw a market from the Necronomicon from, um, uh, oh, God, what is his name? 1800s author. Uh, he wrote... Uh, not T.S. Eliot. Um, he wrote the time machine. He wrote the Necronomicon. He wrote uh, uh, basically all these short stories. He's very famous. God, I can't remember. I'm blanking out on it right now. Um, but science fiction author came up with this whole idea of of uh, the story that the Necronomicon was supposed to be, which was this hidden book that was discovered and interpreted and everybody who gets involved with it dies they even did the movie evil dead was based around this book you know this story uh because it was so intriguing uh but these three guys wrote this book and it sold like hotcakes didn't huh. know that it was all horseshit at the time because they all the symbols all of the rituals they created were basically pulled out of their ass um but the story of Tiamat and Marduk is an ancient Babylonian story that they lifted and put it in the book. It has all right. chapters. Um, and it started the conversation going on what is real occult or real paranormal. Because obviously I was really interested in, you know, finding out how to work this thing. And it just led to a lifetime of of the Afrocentric religions and learning uh, that uh, there is that real stuff out there. It's just not out in the open. They don't publish it in books like right. the Necronomicon. And, you know, and it does say even here, it says some have derided it as a clumsy hoax. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while others have praised it as a powerful spell book. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's not. It is. <laughs> It's a market um, that somebody created. It is a hoax, but it's one of those fun kind of, it's P.T. Barnum type hoax. You know, it's not uh, meant to uh, create a religion like some. It's it's fiction that is portrayed. It's, it's Blair Witch type fiction. Right. You know, it's presented as being real, but it's not. Now, Nicole, I tried looking up your book. I didn't find it. Um, I looked. I, I typed in the exact title on Amazon. I'm really surprised. I couldn't find it anywhere. At least I, I, I didn't keep scrolling. I went through a few different pages. It might be farther. So I was going to pull it up. Another book I wanted to show. This is another book from my childhood. Um, I also had around. And that was Red Skelton, Favorite Ghost Stories. Dude, this fucking book, man, was badass. Like this book here, I almost really want to read it again. You know, I really do. It's it's, but I remember when I read it when I was young, 
it was great. It was like spooky shit. So I wonder how it really would be now, you know. But anyways, this was another classic. And then um, uh, there's my book. I had to bring my book up. That's the Kindle version right there. The paperback looks slightly different. It's got the half a face on it there. It's got my eye. Uh, but for some reason, when I did the Kindle version, it wanted like a different type of cover or something. I don't know. So I ended up like doing the full full face on it. Um, but it was different. But yeah, there's mine. I guess still got five stars. Yay. All right. Anyways. All right. So I just wanted to show all that. I was just, yeah. well, I, figured we, I figured we'd get some books. Yeah, in, in the process of, of doing this, I've come across a, a lot of stuff that, I mean, meeting Hans Holzer, uh, one of the godfathers of actual paranormal investigation. Right. Uh, he He's dead now, but right. um, he, he was one of the original uh, in the 80s pumping out a new book every year. He was actually back, goes all the way back to the early 70s. Hey, that guy that was doing the Hosier Files, Hosier, Hosier, fuck, the Hosier <laughs> Files show. I don't like to say the effort too much on my show, but the guy that was doing the, remember he was doing the show. Uh huh. And he was supposed to be out. He was going to come on the show like during, like, I don't know. I finally got a hold of him. I got him to agree. He said something about in September. And then, like, when I tried to get, not this September, but like a while back. And then he flaked out on me. But, anyways, just thought I'd throw that out there. So if you're watching there, Mr. Hold your files, guy. I can't remember your name. Well, my godfather, the my first teacher, was in several of his books. You know, the New Pagans, uh, witches, uh, even ghosts. the The title of those books, anyway, uh, where he goes. Uh, Hans Holzer does these investigations and interviews people who are, you know, involved in those types of things. Right. Uh, he's even got the Warrens in there somewhere. I forget mm -hmm. which which book he's got them in. Right. But the, the Holzer files are essentially trying to follow in the footsteps of the Warrens because they got the Warren, Warren files and, you right. know, all the movies that have come out with the conjuring house and the, the conjuring series. 